What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic, and we're back with another tutorial. It's been a long time since we've done any tutorials, but there's been a ton of new parts that we've been using from some of the mods, and I've been getting a lot of questions about how to use some of those parts. In particular, today we're going to look at the one part that I think is one of the most powerful things that you've got in the mod pack, and that is this here, which is called a smart engine controller. Now, what makes this so much more powerful than a regular engine or regular controller is it kind of combines all the functions into one do-it-all block, and it also allows you to hook it up to both pistons and bearings, making it super, super powerful. So what it does really is rather than use preset positions like the controller does or just have, you know, a rotation like an engine does, it actually lets you set a bunch of different parameters. So you can set the speed of the rotation or the speed of the piston extension. You can set the total length that you want it to go to. You can determine how much power it has, which would determine how much weight it can push or rotate on the bearing. And then, of course, you can determine the stiffness, which kind of allows you to make pistons act a little bit like suspension. In this video, what I want to do is just go through the smart engine i want to go through how you can hook it up and use it for a few different things for example if you want to use it for powering a bearing as an actual motor going forwards and backwards or if you want to use it on buttons and then we'll go through how i use it to set up really simple plane controls all the planes i've been making recently use smart engines for the controls and they're super super useful because it lets you set your maximum angles that you want each of your flaps and ailerons to go at and you could adjust it all live you could have it to very specific angles and it's just a really really great way to make planes so i want to run through really quickly how to set that up for you guys and if you have any other suggestions at the end of this video of other tutorials you'd like to see with the smart engine or just with any blocks in general of course, you can always let me know in the comments down below, and I'll gladly do a video on it if there's enough people who are interested. Now, I know Durf, who's obviously one of the mod pack makers, uh, I know he does a few tutorials on his channel in some of the mod pack logic. I know he's gone through at some point in time all the different logic functions, so of course, I'll include his channel in the description down below. So if there's something I don't cover here and, uh, you know, you're looking for a quick fix, I would recommend go checking out his channel. I'm sure he's got some tutorials there on his mod pack stuff. So really simply, we can go through a basic setup of the smart controller. Now, the smart motor, it really it uses the number logic, obviously, and it requires you to paint certain colors, but it can be used for bearings or pistons. We've got a bearing rotating this little plus piece, and then right next to it, we'll put a piston, and we'll hook them up one at a time just to show the difference, but you can use it for both of them, no problem. So we can hook the smart engine into the bearing. Now, by default, the smart engine has 10,000 power, zero speed, and zero distance. So it's not really gonna do anything initially, but we have to hook it up to a bunch of different number inputs. Now, you can hook it up to number inputs with the math block and have the math block feed into it, you can also just do it with counters, which are these little blocks with the dot on it if you want to give it a static value. And it's really up to you. So the smart engine will actually take four different inputs. And so you can change which input you're giving it based on the color of the block. So if you give it an input and we paint that input white, that is actually the speed parameter. So right now this counter block is set to zero. We haven't given it any value. But if we put a tick button into it and, you know, let's go up by 10 at a time. Uh, now you can see our speed is actually being set to 10. And now our speed is being set to 20, 30, 40, and 50, and so on. And we can keep clicking this and keep increasing the value of that counter. And it'll keep speeding up that bearing. And, you know, it just keeps, you know, keep going. You know, we can just increase it by a lot more. There we go. You can see we can spin it really, really fast. And lo and behold, we've got that spinning. And it'll spin in the one direction. And then, of course, we can rotate it and it'll start spinning in the opposite direction. But it is just giving it a speed value and we're not giving it any distance. Now, if we give it another one... Uh, and this one we can set to be black, that'll change the power. And you can see because this has a value of zero, even though the controller is still being given speed, the uh, the block has stopped rotating completely. And if we remove that, it'll go back to rotating because it gets that default 10,000 power. So you can, of course, manipulate that. And then the third parameter you can feed it is, of course, the stiffness, which is either of the two grays. Now, I haven't really done too much with stiffness. The only thing I've really heard that you could use it for is if you want to have your pistons kind of extend and then act more like suspension, you can adjust the stiffness of the piston so it's kind of softer or harder. Um, but I've always just left the controller at the default value. So I don't really know what that default value and stiffness is, but it's pretty decent for most things. Of course, you make it stiffer, it means the connection is more rigid. Uh, but then, of course, you still need enough power to actually move the connection. And then finally, the last thing you feed to the controller is just a value, a regular value. Could be orange, could be any other color. It just can't be one of those three colors, white, gray, or black. And this is the actual angle you want the controller to go to. As you can see, if we remove that, it'll just free spin. But if we 
put a distance on it. Now it's got an angle. And then of course we can connect this to a button like so. And as we change the button position, you can see it'll actually move it to the position we're giving it. So we can actually put a number display here really quickly just to show you guys what angle we're actually telling it to go to. So here we go, we've got our number display and we'll just, perfect. So we're telling it to go to 400 degrees. Uh, let's bring it back. Let's just do this a little bit easier. Let's go to 10 degrees, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Now the piston is the exact same setup. We can just disconnect this from the bearing. We can connect it to the piston. Uh, and now you'll see it'll go to 15 because we're telling it to go to 90. It can't actually go to 90. It can only go to a distance of 15. So it'll go to that max distance of 15. And if we bring it back down to 10, oh, we've got too much speed here. Hold on. Let's just, uh, let's just slow down the speed. Yeah, we, we gave way too much speed on the piston. You got to make sure with your pistons, you don't, uh, overdo it on the speed because they'll try and go to the position. They go so fast, they overshoot it. And then it's trying to correct constantly, but we'll just change it to a speed of 10. Really simple. I don't actually know what these speed units mean, but now you can see perfect. And if we set it to any position, it'll go to that position. So of course, this is super powerful because, you know, you could have a piston that now look, we can live update it. Uh, there we go. You can see. And as we hit each button, it'll go to that position. And unlike the pulsing pistons that we've done before, this will stay in that position pretty much rigid without moving. So really, really convenient stuff if you want to make, you know, pistons that have a specific measurement now not everyone wants to use the smart engine as just sort of a way to go between two angles a lot of people want to use it to actually power their wheels so here we got a driver's seat we'll just put that down now the driver's seat will output a one or a negative one when you're actually giving it a w or s signal so we can actually use this to our advantage and do something a little bit crazy to power this motor and really simply all we need is a single math block that feeds into the smart controller as well as our sort of counter block to give us our speed now we set our math block to multiplication and we connect it into our smart motor and we make sure we paint this white so that's our speed indicator now the speed we actually want we're going to store in this block here so let's just connect this counter up and uh, we'll give it a speed of you know what let's just give it a speed of 1000 which is purple so boom it's got a speed of 1000 and you can see it's going to now spin in the forward direction because there's nothing else being multiplied by 1000 so it's just passing the 1000 through the white and spinning it but if we connect the seat to the multiplication because we're not pressing any buttons on the seat it's now showing a zero value so it's not moving at all and if we press w it gives us a one value which in turn moves it forward and if we press s it gives us a negative one value which in turn pushes it in reverse and really simply with a single math block we've now created a smart engine which we could use for a driving of a car just like a regular engine just like a regular bearing you can use a single bearing you don't have to do multiple bearings to go in multiple directions and just by multiplying the value to the seat you can actually move it forward and backwards and problem solve now let's say instead of powering this bearing with a seat you want to have it go forward and backwards with a couple of logic connections let's say you're doing tank steering something like that i'm not exactly sure and you want to use logic connections to rotate it in one direction or in the other direction actually this is kind of similar to what scrapman and i used for the remote control car race. We had the car being powered by buttons and I used a setup sort of similar to this in order to give us that forward and reverse on the engine. So if you wanna do it with buttons, you can't just connect them into the multiplication because these only will give you a value of one. They don't give you a value of negative one. So we have to have one of them converted to have that value of negative one, just like the seat does when you press S. And so really simply, we just add another block here. We'll just move this multiplication down. And this one's still the same thing. So it'll be this input multiplied by the speed we want our engine to go at. And that'll be the one value. But instead of feeding it directly into the smart engine, we actually have to feed it into an addition block first. Paint this addition block white so it knows it's the speed. And then feed that into the engine. And now if we press this, it multiplies it by one. And you can see no problem multiplies it by our speed. And we're good to go. Now on the reverse side, we do the exact same thing. We multiply our speed that we want to go by our logic connection but then we also have to reverse that speed. So either we can have, instead of this, we could have a separate counter that's a negative number and we could feed it this way and do it like that. Or we could multiply it by the same speed and just set this counter to be a negative one. So we can just paint this brown. Now this counter has a value of negative one. This counter has a value of, I think 1000, which is our speed. And if we press this button, it'll rotate forward. We press this button, it'll multiply it by the speed and by negative one, and then add it to the value and pass it through. And of course, because this value is zero, it passes through only the one. So now you can see we rotate backwards, rotate forwards, backwards, forwards. So this is with logic, 
completely the same setup really simple single bearing and of course if we had these as or gates we could have the whole thing hooked up into a tank steering setup you could have one smart engine per side so one side you could have this one side you could have the other do this same kind of setup and you could have a tank that drives with just a single row of bearings on either side and is completely controlled and the beauty of this of course is we can adjust our speed live while we're driving we could have this button hooked into a seat or whatever we want to do and we could also if we really wanted to just have it hooked up this way and we could actually have a different speed in reverse and forward so you can see now we go forward and when we hit reverse it's only negative one block per second so it's extremely slow of course we can we can speed that up a little bit and there we go so you can have a reverse that's one speed and forward that's completely different speeds. So you can do all sorts of cool stuff with this smart engine. I encourage you guys to check it out and uh, play around with it. It is a very, very cool block, and I think it is super powerful and super useful. So the final thing I wanted to show you guys in this was just how I've been using this block to set up some really basic plane controls. All right, so let's pretend this is our super awesome plane that we want to power. Now let's give it the control services. So on the wings, we'll put a couple bearings here, and these will be our roll bearings. So just like that, we'll put one there. And another one here and on the tail we'll have our pitch bearings which allows the plane to go up and down so really simply there we go we'll put one there and we'll put another one here and then on the vertical tail we'll put the uh yaw bearing which would rotate that back and forth now we're going to need a stepper motor for each of the three different controls so we're going to need one for roll one for pitch and one for yaw and of course we can just kind of hook those up right away so this will be the yaw one uh the pitch one hook those up to there and we'll make sure they're in the same direction really simply perfect and the roll controls and we'll make sure they're in the opposite direction so you want one to roll one way and one to roll the other way when you use the roll controls now all the control services can pretty much move at the same speed we don't really need them to move at different speeds so we'll just have one white counter up here we'll connect it to a button we'll give it a default value of let's say 1000 so that'll be the speed at which everything moves and we'll connect it into all of our controls and you can see they're all kind of they're all kind of going crazy now, but that'll determine the speed at which these controllers will move. We'll use default power and default stiffness. Problem solved. Now, I like to control my planes with the seat mostly with W, S, A, and D for roll and pitch. And then I usually do two buttons for yaw. So let's put our seat down here and let's put our two buttons down for yaw controls, which will control the tail. And then the other ones, W, S, A, and D will control the pitch and roll. So I guess we'll start with roll because roll is this first one here. Now with roll, I like to control it with A and D from the seat. But instead of controlling the speed like we did in that demo there, we're actually going to control the distance. So it's pretty much the same setup. All we have to do is put down a counter block. And then we have to put down a math block to multiply our counter block value. And we feed that into our stepper motor. Now we aren't going to paint this white. We've already got the white input here for the speed. So this we're just going to leave as an orange default color and that way it'll tell us what angle we want it to be at whenever we give this a value. Now you'll see it's gone back to angle zero which is where we want it for now and we can give it some counter value. Let's say we want it to be uh, 30 degrees so red one two three now it's 30 degrees and you can see it'll actually roll at 30 degrees. We've got a 30 degree tipped up one way, 30 degree tipped up the other way. And if you don't like the direction that's in, you can just, of course, reverse the bearings just like regular and boom, 30 degrees in the opposite direction. No problem. Now we need to get this hooked up to A and D from the seat and we can't just hook this up straight from the seat because then it would be W and S controlling it. So all we got to do is add in another little block here and hook it up to this AD converting mode, hook that into the seat connect that into there and now just like the other one before it converts a and d to one and negative one and if we go a it rolls the one way and we go d it rolls the other way so you can see really really simple stuff has an instantaneous response time i don't feel any delay when i'm using this and of course this gives us our roll control on our plane and the cool thing about this is by adjusting this white value we can adjust how fast the ailerons move so we can slow it down if we wanted to and of course by changing this counter here we could actually adjust the total angle so let's say we want it to go more than 30 degrees that it's set to now let's just hit this 50 degrees 60 degrees there we go and now you can see much much steeper angle obviously that would be too aggressive but you can play around with it and you can see as soon as we get out of the seat and let go of the controls it goes back to that perfect zero value so really really convenient stuff now of course to do the w and s portion for the pitch same thing we'll just move it down here so we can put a multiplication connect that into our motor uh, now our pitch is being given a value of zero of course, we can give it some counter value. So we want our tail to go uh, between 0 and 30, let's say, just like the other one. And we connect our seat directly into that multiplication. Now, if we press W, it'll pitch the tail one way. We press S, it'll pitch it the other. For the last piece, the tail yaw, 
we're gonna have to do the same thing we did over there and connect it to these two logic buttons. So logic buttons will output a value of one when they're pressed and output a value of zero when they're not. Really simple stuff. So again, we'll do two multiplication signs, just like that. We'll have a counter on one side, which will be our angle value. So we'll plug that into both. Let's go really aggressive on this one and uh, let's give it a value of uh, 90 degrees. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Of course, you could hook a number display up to this if you really wanna see what value it is, but really simply these will hold the value that you give them and they'll keep that value even if you save it on the left, move it on the left, whatever, it always keeps that value. So you can set your plane once and then you don't have to have all these displays or anything like that. Now we've got our multiplications. We put them to an addition sign just like this, and we give that to our angle position. Now, of course, on the one side here, we need to also multiply it by negative one. So we'll just put another counter here, give it a brown value, and click that once. Now it's being multiplied by negative one on this side. And then, of course, we connect our two buttons directly in to our multiplication sign. So if we press one, it's one times 90, which gives us a value of 90. And then it's adding it to the other multiplication, which is zero because we aren't pressing the other button. And lo and behold, it'll go through and you can see it's set that tail fin to a 90 degree angle. Now, if we let go, it goes back to zero, press two, it goes to the other side because we're multiplying it by 90, but we're also multiplying it by negative one. So it gives us a value of negative 90 and goes to the other side. And of course, if you press both buttons at the same time, it's 90 plus negative 90, and it gives you a value of zero. So really convenient stuff. And now you can see we've got a really simple plane setup with smart engines. And of course, we can adjust what angles we want these at. We can adjust how fast we want them to rotate between those angles. And of course, it'll all go back to a completely zero position and using really simple WASD controls and a few buttons. And using this, you could change the control scheme however you want. You don't have to do WSAD with two buttons like I did. You can do it all with buttons like I did with the glider plane or however you feel like doing it. So hopefully this video answers some of your guys' questions about the smart engine and lets you set up your own smart engine projects. It's a really, really cool block and I really think it's super useful and I really Really encourage you guys to check it out and if you do understand how to do it with the number logic and stuff you'll really learn just how powerful it is and how easy it is to make super customizable creations that of course you can adjust live with controllers and engines if you want to change the power levels or change the angles you have to get out of your creation adjust them and then get back in with this you can do it all with the click of a button which makes it super super powerful so like i said before if there are other tutorials you'd like to see for this mod or other mods or you know, just vanilla blocks or anything you want to see, let me know in the comments down below. I'll gladly do tutorials if there's enough interest in them and enough people are asking me for them. I know a lot of the times I go through some crazy concepts and I don't really explain too much how they actually work at the really base level, but I figured we'd do a tutorial on this block just because I think it's super, super powerful and I think you guys will really like it. So of course, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and while you're at it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoy this video and we'll see y'all next time.